Now that we're done with the lion ass uh Greg Caden, let me take y'all over to Russell Poole. Because I found some very, very, very valuable uh information and uh information in an uh, interview that uh I found uh just scrolling, researching, digging with my man Davy D. Shout out to Davy D from the BX, but co-op city. But he he live in Oakland now. He's a figurehead, you know, in hip hop. Uh, he's a very conscious brother uh, that lives out in um, Oakland now. If you from Oakland, you know who Davey D is. If you real hip hop, you know who Davey D is, right? But uh, Davey D did an interview with Russell Poole and Russell's uh, Randall Sullivan, right? Look at this. We're going to get to it today, baby. Still under fair use over here. employment were officers, LAPD officers working for death row. Uh, why was that so unusual? And well, the department, why were you the so, department, so surprised the department about had an that? Official policy that officers could not work for death row records. The one officer they ever uh, acknowledged knowing worked for death records. He was death row records. He was the only one who actually got a permit. So he was really the only one who was slightly honest. Uh, they uh, it, it, that resulted in a huge investigation. They made they made him promise he would never work for Death Row Records again. Then they found out he was in Vegas with Tupac at the time of Tupac's death. So, uh, uh, but now, for all y'all that don't get when I say that Death Row didn't hire. LAPD off duty cops or anything because Death Row is a record label. Reggie, right way security, was hiring the police. Why? Because it was illegal for off duty LAPD to work for Death Row Records. Right? Now, What's interesting is he said that, yo, only one person got permission and got a permit to work for death row. And that was the week when Tupac, they was out there when Tupac got killed. Now, how many of y'all remember that phone conversation between Reggie and Sharita, right? And Reggie asked Sharita, he said, Kevin Gaines, yeah, did you ever pay him with a check from Death Row Records? Because they saying they got a, a, a check from Death Row. Wait, wait, wait. And he got, and she, Reggie, I'm scanned. I, I'm a bunch of things, but I ain't that scandalous. Why would I pay him with a check from Death Row when I was hiding him? Wait, unless it was that thing in Vegas, right? Let's see what's that thing in Vegas. Hmm. Let me show you something else. Hold on a second, uh, TikTok. Don't go nowhere. I'm back, TikTok. All right. Check it. Y 
Y'all remember that, right? Now, this is the FBI files right here. Look what it say. It says, in September 1996, Gaines was assigned to a desk at his workplace two days prior to the Tupac shooting until two day until two weeks after Gaines allegedly was on a special assignment yet was seen in Las Vegas hanging out with Captain so-and-so who they hired in, allegedly allowed Gaines to be on a special assignment blank added that former deputy chief is that Bernard Parks? Allegedly, in a circle at LAPD and believes they all are corrupt because of what they allow to go on regarding gains. Blank and other LAPD officers. All right. But as y'all can see, Gaines allegedly was on a special assignment, yet was seen in Las Vegas hanging out with the captain. Allegedly. That captain allowed Gaines to be on a special assignment. What was the special assignment? Right? Now, I need you to understand, again, that LAPD could not work for death row because it was illegal. And somebody from the LAPD was able to do it. It, it chronicles a whole lot of different things, which leads to the title. Right. You're talking about the Rampart police scandal and some of the origins of that, possible origins of that. You're talking about uh, possible uh, uh, um, people who were behind the murders of popular rap stars Tupac and Notorious B.I.G. And you're talking about the very complex situation surrounding Death Row Records, which is headed by Suge Knight, and in, in the complexities in the music industry. Um, let me just kind of jump ship a little bit, and we'll come back to the police part. You talk a lot about Death Row. <clears throat> And one of the things I got from the book, which you guys seem to be surprised about, was the fact that in its employment were officers, LAPD officers working for death row. Uh, why was that so unusual? And well, the department, why were you the so, department, so surprised the department about had an that? Official policy that officers could not work for death row records. The one officer they ever uh, acknowledged knowing worked for death records. He was death row records. He was the only one who actually got a permit. So he was really the only one who was slightly honest. Uh, they uh, it, it, that resulted in a huge investigation. They made they made him promise that he would never work for death row records again. Then they found out he was in Vegas with Tupac at the time of Tupac's death. So, uh, uh, but what it is is that why weren't they allowed to work for death row? Because records? death row records was considered to be a criminal organization. I mean, Suge Knight, as you know, has a a long criminal record, and a lot of the people connected. Direct, most directly with Suge Knight had long criminal records and of law of, you know, major criminal violence. Suge's uh, uh, entourage uh, was uh, uh, constructed of uh, the blood gang members in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Suge Knight uh, was a very powerful individual, and what made him powerful, he had access to just about the entire blood gang, uh, you know, and he also had dozens of police officers in his back pocket. He also had a district attorney uh, in his back pocket who was actually handling one of his probation cases. He also uh, he had connections with the Compton mayor, and uh, uh, I, there's a, uh, I have a picture of uh, uh, Suge Knight and Mayor Reardon embracing each other. So he had access also to Maxine Waters, and there there's a lot of uh, uh, she's a councilwoman in Los Angeles, and. Uh, uh, she actually stopped a uh, a narcotic 
federal probe in, in Texas uh, involving uh, uh, her husband's best friend and actually uh, stopped midway through the investigation. Right. But I'm, I'm trying to keep it connected to uh, Suge and, and the death row situation. One of the things what, what I said when I started the question was that it seemed like in the book you guys were surprised. And the reason why I'm saying that is because being in the music industry, it was pretty common knowledge that police officers work uh, not just for death row, but they work for a number of artists and institutions and, and labels and are often contracted. Well, it's not illegal to moonlight and work right. security for a record company. It was only illegal to work for this particular record but company. The reason, why, the reason why I seemed like I was going, why it's so surprised, because it was kind of chronicled in articles. There's been a few articles where people have gone like, I went to death row. And there were police officers there. You know, the uh, vibe well, is probably the most. Right, right. Uh, hey, the hip hop press produced a lot of this material. No question right. about it. Uh, uh, and an author named Ronan Rowe compiled a lot of it in his book, uh, Have Done Will Travel. But I mean, but, when, but, when this but, happened, but these, though, did those raise. But, but the, you know, those cops that they were talking about then, they, it, it, supposedly they were from Inglewood, uh, Compton. They were from these other uh, police departments that. Uh, well, Compton was a totally corrupt police department, but still, even they eventually instituted some some uh, controls on death row. But they didn't have a formal policy saying you cannot work for death row records, and if you do, you'll be fired. So it was just a situation about LAPD, LAPD. couldn't yeah. work for them. Yeah. So let me ask. That would make sense. Why? Uh. Uh. Reggie be trying to act like they didn't work for death row. Because LAPD couldn't work for death row. Just LAPD. The corrupt, you heard what they say? Compton police, the motherfuckers, the doubt Compton police department was a corrupt police department. Dirty ass pigs over in Compton PD, right? No dirty ass pigs that they had. What precinct gets shut down because them niggas is so goddamn dirty, right? And that's where Reggie comes from. The goddamn Compton police. When you're wondering why the Englewood police that was with Biggie was able to work with them, and these other uh, police, now you know why. LAPD couldn't work with death row. And this is why the Rafael Perez's, the David Max, the Kevin Gaines, all allegedly was working off the books. And you, as you heard Sharita say, Snoop paid this nigga in cash. Now, I've been telling y'all, see, this is why I don't trust Greg Caden, because he got all Russell Poole's work, right? All his investigation, everything. I know as a bunch of other people know, that that chain story is a fucking lie. The chain story is a decoy, an alibi for them niggas to get away with it and throw people off. Yeah, because everybody's going to believe, oh, the nigga Trayvon, I mean, the nigga Orlando was the shooter, did it, did it, nigga Pod jumped on them niggas. Southside had beef with the good mom pyros. Nigga, Keefe D told y'all how many times he was cool with Shook. He seen Shug the night before. Shug came over to him and said, yo, what up? You know what I'm saying? Gave the nigga love. They know each other for comp. They were not rivals. And now I'm going to let you hear from uh, Russell Poole's mouth that that whole chain shit was a lie. And so anyway, there's no there's no question Tupac was going to leave death row. I just want to make that clear. I mean, if, if you have any question about it, call uh, Charles Ogletree is probably the leading black attorney in the United right. States. Yeah. And he'll tell you that was he was hired to do was get Tupac away from death row records alive. That okay. was essentially his job. And Tupac knew he if he was going to be killed, he knew it was going to be somebody from the death row organization. And, uh, you know, when you really probe into that incident uh, that night, it, it all started with a fight. Uh, uh, the Tyson fight, and then this incident at the casino involving this Compton Crip named Orlando Anderson. Right. And the information I received was that that uh, incident was staged to uh, provide a uh, 
a motive that would uh, uh, that would make the Compton Crips the number one suspect in the murder of Tupac Shakur. You got to. What I told you, what I told you. So it was an alibi to put it on the Compton Crips, right? Who was the first person to say it was the Compton Crips, y'all? Please put their name on the, in the chat. Please put their name in the chat. Who was the first person in Vegas to call somebody and say it was the Compton Crips? The Southside Crips, I mean. Thank you. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We not slow, bro. How would he know? He wasn't even there, right? He didn't see the fight. He wasn't at the shooting. But he called his pops and told him it was the Compton Crips. That shit was a lie, bro. That chain story, the, the Lakewood shit is a lie. Nobody in fucking L.A. ever heard of a death row chain, bounty on death row chains. Nobody ever got money on the bounty for death row chains. That shit was a lie, bro. Them niggas had a fight because Trayvon Lane and Baby Lane, both from the LBC, ran into each other. And now Trayvon Lane is from the fucking mall. He from Compton and turned pyro. Baby Lane is still cripping and now moved to Compton, but in the, in the south side. And they clash and they fight and the fucking chain break in the scuffle. And they use that shit as the alibi. That ain't what Trayvon ran over there and told Tupac that made him go flying over the motherfucking Orlando Anderson. Y'all believe that bullshit if you want. Y'all believe that bullshit if you want. And Russell, I mean, Greg Caden knows this because he got Russell Poole's fucking records. And so anyway, there's no there's no question Tupac was going to leave death row. I just want to make that clear. I mean, if, if you have any question about it, call uh, Charles Ogletree is probably the leading black attorney in the United right. States. Yeah. And he'll tell you that was he was hired to do was get Tupac away from death row records alive. That okay. was essentially his job. And Tupac knew he, if he was going to be killed, he knew it was going to be somebody from the death row organization. And, uh, you know, when you really probe into that incident uh, that night, it, it all started with the fight, uh, uh, the Tyson fight, and then this incident at the casino involving this Compton Crip named Orlando Anderson. Right. And the information I received was uh, that uh, incident was staged to uh, provide a uh, a motive that would uh, uh, that would make the Compton Crips the number one suspect in the murder of Tupac Shakur. You got to remember after that incident, uh, uh, Suge's entourage leaves. They go to Suge's house for an hour or two, and then uh, then they plan this uh, a trip to uh, Suge Knight's nightclub in Las Vegas, and uh, at the last moment security measures were changed and I, I got this information from security guards that were working for suge knight and many of those uh, uh, uh security officers were police officers and uh it all comes down to what good are these armed police officers anyway because none of them chased the guy none of them fired their weapons uh if they did they'd be fired from their job so you know all in all uh, when you when you look at this case, uh, there was uh, Suge knew he could make a lot of money with uh, Tupac out of the picture. If he leaves, uh, there's going to be uh, there's going to be uh, you know problems financially for death row. So yeah, this this isn't just Russell Poole's theory, by the way. I mean, the, both of Tupac's main bodyguards, Kevin Hackey and Frank Alexander, have told the police that Suge 
set Tupac up to die. Right. Snoop Dogg has told the police that Suge had Tupac killed. But and I don't Shug, think Suge hasn't been charged. Suge hasn't no. been convicted. I don't, there's, I don't think and, there's and, not, and, there's and, not and, enough evidence And in all fairness, you know, there are people that are that are also connected with the camp. See, this is way before Russell Poole uh, figured out that it was fucking pork butt. And he, at the end, before he, when he, before he died, he apologized to Shook and be like, oh, shit, my bad. It's fucking pork butt. It's this dirty fucking pig and shit. Then he goes and tells fucking the police with, they say, uh, Pork boy father was there, but uh Pork boy father said he wasn't there. But he went and told him, yo, no, my bad. It's these motherfuckers. And he he dies right there, right in the room, telling them that it was pork boy. So when Greg Kanan picks up the case, his number one spec suspect is pork boy. He go to him, he said, Oh no, nah, it ain't me. It turned him. Nah, if Southside killed Biggie in retaliation for Tupac, they ain't get their money for the Tupac killing. And send Greg Caden on this motherfucking wild ass goose chase. And gave Greg Caden come back. Hey, man, you lied to me. Southside was in it. They was there with Biggie. Oh, I'm, my bad. It was Poochie. Yeah, you know, Teresa Swan, Tammy Hawkins. Yeah, you know, Suge did it. He he got her to come in, and they set it up with Poochie. Yeah, it was Poochie. And then Greg Caden goes off trying to set KVD up on the Biggie shit to find out about the Tupac shit because Reggie told him they killed Tupac. And they they was they killed Biggie in retaliation. So he started getting into the Tupac shit because Reggie told him they killed Tupac in retaliation and, and they was killed big in retaliation for not getting their money for killing Tupac. And Greg Caden took that shit, ran with it, ran and sat down, watched RJ Bond, uh Kevin Hackey, uh Frank Alexander do uh the Tupac assassination film, went and watched their film, took their theory. Where Frankie was saying how the cause the shooting happened and act like he fucking found that out. He went and watched fucking, you can see him at the screening. He's at the screening. They didn't know who was in the cars. Frank just talked about how the shit happened. Reggie gave him all that other bullshit story. And remember when he went to KVD, KVD said, Greg Kane and pulled the boy down. You was here. You was here. T Brown was here. Orlando was here. Da, da, da. This is how it happened. Da, da, da. And you going to say that. KVD, okay. You call me dirty with the drugs. I'll say anything you want me to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We was in the car. None of his story adds up because Greg Kane and fucking drew out the plan for him and told him to agree to it. Let me show you something else.
Here we go again. Now check this out. Now remember why police couldn't work at death row, right? Let me let's see, right? In notorious B.I.G. And you're talking about the very complex situation surrounding death row records, which is headed by Suge Knight and in, in the complexities in the music industry. Um, let me just kind of jump ship a little bit and we'll come back to the police part. You talk a lot about death row. <clears throat> and one of the things I got from the book, which you guys seem to be surprised about, was the fact that in its employment were officers, LAPD officers working for death row. Uh, why was that so unusual, and well, the department, why were you the so, so surprised the about that? had an that? official policy that officers could not work for death row records. The one officer they ever uh, acknowledged knowing worked for death records. He was death row records. He was the only one who actually got a permit. So he was really the only one who was slightly honest. Uh, they uh, could, it, it, that resulted in a huge investigation. They made they made him promise that he would never work for death row records again. Then they found out he was in Vegas with Tupac at yeah. the time of Tupac's death. So. Kenna and Kentron was paying that nigga. I thought you didn't know him. I thought you didn't know him. Unless it was that other thing. Let me tell y'all something else, right? Thank you, Courtney O. Look at this picture of Kevin Gaines and, and Mac at, at the goddamn uh, Peterson Museum, right? This 3.15 in the morning, the night Big got killed, right? Look how Kevin Gaines is dressed. Why did this nigga just take the bow tie off? Or do he still got the bow? Look, did he take the bow tie off? Why would he still have the, his shirt buttoned up all the way to the collar like that? Look at his outfit. What did he do? Just lose the jacket and the bow tie? Who wears a shirt collar like this all the way up?
Who does that? And y'all know Kevin Gaines was down with the and and uh David Mack was down with the Nation of Islam. They on the scene. This is the Biggie murder. Look, you see the time, everything. The camera. Right in front of the Peterson. And remember, Rafael Perez went and signed his name in the mall just to look at Biggie body. You tell me that ain't the composite of the, the first nigga right there? Yeah, okay. Kevin Gaines and was living with Sharita at the time. Let me give y'all a better look. She guys right here. There you go, right here, baby. Mac and Gaines right in front of the goddamn Peterson. And these niggas talking about, oh, man, they were. And how many other people said they seen them out there? Come on, man. Stop playing. Y'all playing, man. Y'all playing, man. Y'all playing. Y'all playing. Y'all can fake it and play stupid if y'all want. They can fool everybody. But not us over here. Okay? Let them keep trying to fool everybody else. Make sure y'all get that hip-hop nucleus. It's out right now, man. The Tunnel Documentary. Choke no joke, y'all already know Courtney Love. Courtney, oh, I said Courtney Love. Courtney, oh, thanks for the love, baby girl. If y'all can't see it, I need y'all to go uh, switch them lenses out. Get you some new ones. Joke, no joke. I will be back in the morning time on my morning grind. I've been slacking, you know what I mean? But I will take, take myself and get back out there. I think I slacked for like a week. But y'all know what it is. And y'all know who it is, right? I ain't got to tell y'all. Choke no joke. Yeah. It's choke no joke. Let's go. Choke no joke. Chicka choke no joke. Choke no joke. Nigga choke no joke. Choke no joke. Yeah. It's choke no joke. Let's go. Choke no joke. Chicka choke no joke. Choke no joke. Nigga choke no joke. Go out to the East Coast, West Coast, put it up.